All right, I want to remind everyone uh, that uh, there's a, been a power shift uh, in the world. There's been an earthquake. The, uh, the fall of Kabul, uh, the newly established Taliban government in Afghanistan is a 12.2 earthquake on the seismic political uh, planetary American, if you will, and global, if you will, powers. We just had one of the largest earthquakes that have ever taken place happen uh, in Afghanistan. Be mindful of that. Now, the earthquake is going to have both political ramifications that are just going to be absolutely um, unpredictable, um, and no one's going to, nobody's prepared for it because no one's prepared for this earthquake. This is the war and rumor of war talked about by the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was looking 2,000 years ago when he saw the fall of Kabul, of Kandahar, Herat, and Afghanistan in general. Jesus prophesied this. But I need to let you know that such earthquakes will cause, uh, if you will, ancillary and if you, all, all kinds of collateral deaths are going to take place. And one of those will be financial. Um, we were headed in the best of times without the fall of Kabul to uh, a time of great inflation where a loaf of bread could cost you $25, a carton of milk could cost you the same. Uh, because of inflation and because of the, um, the efforts by Joe Biden to buy the political offices of the president and mayors of cities uh, and governorships around America by pouring all of this money from the Treasury into the hands of poor people that they would vote for them in the upcoming 2022 election and the 2024 election. All that was payout money to be sure perhaps some jobs would be inured by the, um, if you will, stimulus packages that were given and also the infrastructure bill. But primarily, this money was given to buy the votes to win the 2022 election and the 2024 election. So inflation is going to go off the chain. And by that, I mean, you're going to need more money than you can ever imagine. So whatever money you have now, uh, I would suggest that you pay down your credit card debt. If you have debt, pay it down. Bring the amount of money that's going out as far as interest is not bringing anything back in. Uh, use that money now rather than buying some new article, some new car, or some new clothing that if you don't that you don't need, or something else that you don't need. You know, lumber right now is higher than the price of gold. Um, the California wildfires um, are going to create, if you will trouble in the, on the western coast like you've never seen before, fuel cost and other kinds of costs that are going to exa exaggerate. So save your ducats, that's your money, uh, and be frugal in all that you do, but mostly pay down your debt uh, and don't incur new debt if you don't have to, to try to ride out this wave of inflation. And of course, we've got potentially a civil war happening right here. Because, you know, the red states are ready to go to war with the blue state. The blue states are ready to go to war with the red states. But this matter of the presidency, of the, uh, the works of people like Mike Lindell, QAnon, One American News, and Newsmax, and Fox News, and of course CNN, MSNBC, Washington Post, and the New York Times, and other news outlets that are pitted against each other, is not, not, no one's going to surrender and say, okay, we're going to come back and stop walking on the wild side. That's never going to happen, not in, in a million years. This war will continue until you actually see shootings uh, in the street with red states against blue states. So I would suggest to you to be very prayerful. Make sure you know your Savior. His name is Jesus. Make sure you know him. And I would advise you to listen to our teachings going forward, our Bible study that happens on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and our mighty worship that happens every Sabbath at 10 a.m. And, of course, our daily broadcast of Trust in the Lord and the Manning Report. But get ready. Nothing can stop this. The mouth of Jesus has spoken it. Me. I'm James Abbott the Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. I want to ask you to come up close for just one second. And I, I want to talk to three-year and older veterans of the uh, Trust in the Lord hour uh, the Open Rewards Prayer Meeting, the Manning Report, and the Pulpit of Power, those four ministries that we do every week. 
uh, producing at least 20 different ministries or sermons every week. If you are a three-year or older veteran, by old I mean four years, five years, six years, seven years, 10 years, 12 years uh, old veteran of, of any of these ministries that we do on a daily basis every week, and you are not a supporter. You've not joined with the uh, the ministry to give your uh, to pledge your support and your alignment with what we've been teaching. I and I, my question is why? I, you've had three years to observe us. You've had three years to listen to us on a daily basis, all weekend, all day long, any hour of the day. We're uh, broadcasting. Uh, you've had three years to watch our various successes. You've three years to watch our ups and downs. You've had three years to listen to the tenor or the consistency of what we have said, whether we are consistent or whether we are all over the chart and what we do and what we believe. You've had three years to watch people around us who have made the commitment to join with our ministry and church and to financially support it. And by the way, I want to give another shout out to Brother Jesse Munez out there in San Bernardino, along with uh, uh, Goldfinger, who is just extraordinary giver, and others that do extraordinary uh, giving to our ministry. My question is to you, if you are a three-year veteran or older, why haven't you joined? Why haven't you committed? And I suppose some of the reasons we say, well, Pastor, man, I belong to another church. And uh, why? How could you, how could you, after three years of hearing me teach about the Sabbath, about righteousness, about the tribulation, and listen to me faithfully as you do, and still go sit up in another pastor's face? How could you be? It's like you, it's like a woman sleeping with two men. You know, one she likes during the week and the other she likes on the weekend. It is it's hypocritical. Um, how could you do that? I mean, as I say, you started three months ago. I can understand why it may take you some time to evaluate. It may take you some time to look at me, to discover you know, who I am. You say, well, pastor, that's not that I don't belong to another church or ministry. I, I, you, I'm with you. But there's some things you say I like, and there's some things you say I don't like. Why? Why is it that some, you, you've made a decision that there's some things that, I, that you don't like are stronger than the things that you do like. I, you know, I am not a psychiatrist, but I am an analyst. And I have to tell you, I analyze the world and I, I understanding. But the understanding and wisdom tells me this, that if there are things that a person such as myself that I am saying, there, there is no room to disagree with what I am saying, unless your purpose is to find something to disagree with. Let's say, for instance, you say, well, I like the fact that you talk about Obama, but I don't like the fact that you talk about Trump. Let's, let's say, for instance, you're one of those, right? Well, the purpose, it isn't, that you, it isn't that you just like what I say about Obama, but don't like what I say about Trump. What it is is that you are looking for a reason to support Trump. It isn't that you don't like it. It's just that you don't like the fact that I'm saying something about it. It isn't that what I'm saying is wrong. Let me put it that way. It isn't what I'm saying is wrong or indifferent. You know it's right. But you have, you've lived your life or you've come up or you've been raised with a doctrine that you can really live in a false reality. That's where you are. You've been raised in a doctrine that you can live in a false reality. That is to say, you can like the truth about Obama, but you don't like the truth about Trump. And it's the same truth. It's the same truth. There's no difference. But because you have been indoctrinated to live in a false reality, you are really a person who needs psychological debriefing. And, and, but trust me, there are zillions of people around the world who live that way. I, there, there are people who know what I'm saying about Trump. Obama is right. They know it, but they choose to ignore it based on the fact that they find a reality that isn't true and they've settled in there. Say so that's one of the reasons why I've not made a commitment because, you know, I, I, I don't like, the fact, I wish you would support what I support. But the, the truth of the matter is, then why do you come? You've given three years or more of your life to listen to me? Three years of your life to listen to me? And you're, no, you're, and you're not tired of listening to me yet? 
And you've given three years of your life, and over the past three years, your life has been greatly upgraded. You've learned, you've been educated, you've been enlightened. And let me say this to you. If you make the commitment, say, well, Pastor, I'm joining with you and I'm going to support. I'm going to do the tithe and offering. I'm going to do the first fruit. I'm going to keep the Sabbath. Your life is going to soar. Now, listen to me very carefully. Now, I'm not going to leave you alone after this. Listen to me very carefully. You come as often as you come over the past three years because you're being helped. You're being educated. You're being enlightened, right? Right. But the thing that you like, whether you, you say, well, I like what you say about Obama, but I don't like what you say about Trump. You do the same thing with the word of God, such as you like the things I say, the teachings that I think, the way I explain the Bible, the way I break it all down and make it clear. But when it comes to things like money or tithing and offering or the Sabbath, well, that you know is also true, but because of your false reality, because you really need a psychological debriefing, because of your false reality, you choose not to believe the tithe or the first fruit or the Sabbath. Now, it isn't that it isn't true. It's just true in all the other things I've said. But you live in a false reality where you, avoid, you try to ignore the truth about the tithe. And so you don't do it. But, it, not, it's not, but there, everything else I say is good to go. Everything I ever say is good to go. Good enough to share with your friends. It makes you laugh. It educates you. It enlightens you. But the tithe? Well... And the full commitment to the ministry, well, the first fruit offerings, well, the Sabbath. That, that's all true as well. But you have chosen and you've been raised and indoctrinated to have a dual reality, which is dangerous. Jesus said this, and I'll leave you. He said, I would rather you be the hot or cold, but not lukewarm. You're lukewarm. You have a dual reality. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I would rather you be completely stomped down against Pastor Manny, trying to, just, trying to take him down. Be fully against him. Be against him with all of your strength. Or be fully for him with all of your strength. But don't be in the middle somewhere lukewarm. You know better than to be spit out of the mouth of Jesus if you're lukewarm. So what's it going to be? You're going to make the commitment and grow and be even greatly better blessed or you're going to continue to walk in the lukewarm spit of the mouth of the Savior. I'm James David Manning, everybody. I'm the Lord's servant. 